Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Pelshia, moderator for the conference call. Welcome to Phi Paisa Capital Limited Q1 FY24 earnings conference call. We have with us today Mr. Narayan Gangadhar, CEO, Phi Paisa Capital Limited, Mr. Prakash Gardani, Olten Director and CBO, Phi Paisa Capital Limited, and Mr. Gaurav Munjal, Olten Director and CFO, Phi Paisa Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participants will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need any assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone telephone. Please note this conference is recorded. I would now like to hand over the floor to the management. Thank you and over to you. Hi everyone, good afternoon and welcome to our Q1 FY24 earnings call. On the call, I am joined with Mr. Gaurav Munjal, PFO, Mr. Prakash Gaddani, CBO and my management team. The Indian market has been, perform has been outperforming the global markets even amidst the global headwinds arising from the US Fed indicating successive rate hikes and the ongoing Ukraine war. While the market growth this quarter was at 5.4% and the total DMAT accounts opened across the country declined. Both the benchmark indices, indices BSE Sensex and Nifty 50 have climbed to their all-time high. All these positive sentiments are expected to drive growth in Indian capital markets, which now has more than 12 crore DMAT accounts. We strongly believe that the Indian markets are poised to grow further with advances in technology and the available of trading products across the country. At Five Paisa, for the past year, we have been focused on acquiring quality customers. We are glad to report strong growth in our retail ADTO segment. Our overall ADTO for Q1 FY24 jumped by 17.9% to 2.84 trillion rupees versus 2.41 in Q4 FY23. Our retail market share jumped almost 9.6% to 3.3% from 3.01 in Q4 FY23. We attribute the growth in ADTO to our continued focus on customer quality and product experience. Our overall revenue stands at 84 CR for Q1 with a 1% year-on-year improvement which factors in less trading days in April and a decline in MTF book due to changes in the financial year. Our PAT stood at 14.5 CR and margins increased to 17.1% owing to cost optimization measures resulting in 97% year-on-year and 0.7% quarter-on-quarter growth in the PAT. We have added 1.08 lakh customers in the previous period, achieving best-in-class payback of approximately four months. Over the past years, the regulatory body has worked tirelessly to make investing accessible and safe to all Indians. In this context, I would like to highlight two key circulars recently released by SEBI. One is no bank guarantee shall be created out of client funds by stockbrokers, and the second is a mandate to compulsory upstream all client funds received by brokers to the clearing corporations on a daily basis. While these changes have an impact on working capital, we welcome both changes and believe it provides further protection to investors of the country. Five Paisa is at the forefront of tech-enabled disruption in the equities ecosystem. We continue to invest in our engineering systems, improving reliability, speed, and performance. We ended this quarter with an all-time high system availability of 99.4%. We are thrilled to report that our latency has improved significantly by over 30%. These announcements have had positive impact on trading activity and volume throughout our products. A few quarters ago, we launched an innovative trading platform, FNO 360, that caters to needs of all types of traders, but especially focuses on option traders. This quarter, we introduced a range of features, including FNO stats, open interest data, advanced option chains, futures and options screeners, India Wix, and more. Traders no longer need to visit multiple platforms for data analysis, as they can now 
perform complete market analysis and place orders directly on our platform. These features have been well received by the community as seen by the rising ADTO numbers. Over the few previous quarters, we have firmed up our digital playbook for customer acquisition and investments. In the coming quarters, we intend to responsibly scale our acquisition channels while continuing to build efficiency by building new digital tools, frameworks, and processes. We will continue to invest in technology and launch innovative products for our 3.6 million strong and ever-increasing customer base. With this, we would like to open the meeting to any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Psa. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad and wait for your turn to ask the question. If you would like to withdraw your request, you may do so by pressing star and 1 again. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad. The first question comes from Deepak Pudar from Safia Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, hi Deepak. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you very much, uh, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand first up, uh, we are we are sp uh, speaking about the investment uh, for a better uh, technology platform and um, uh, even for the ac acquisitions, right? Uh, so, uh, so what sort of investment here we are talking about and, and, and how can it impact your margins as such? Yeah, so the investments are going to be both on people as well as products. And we will strive to run the company at the current, uh, you know, profit margin levels which you know which currently is at around 17 percent but we expect that over the coming quarters you know we will continue to scale up those our technology and product investments as well and uh, you know while that could impact the margin overall i do expect us to be within the range that we are in right now so around 17 percent is what in spite of that's our target higher investment, yeah. uh, that's what we might be looking at, right? And, and do we have in terms of, I mean, uh, absolute amount, what sort of investment we are looking for? So we don't disclose that data. And, uh, you know, obviously there are sensitivities involved in disclosing that. But you can look at our, uh, we have presented a detailed, uh, you know, in the PNL. Uh, you can see a detailed breakdown of the current cost structure and uh, understand where they are at today. Okay, understand. And, and, and sir, can you provide the data in terms of the client addition? What was the client addition cost in first quarter? Yeah, so again, you know, this is information again that we don't disclose because uh, there is a there is a digital ecosystem in place that we are currently uh, part of. And also we have built our internal systems in a way to ensure that we have a payback period of around, you know, four months. So to that degree, we don't disclose the cost of our acquisitions or uh, or anything as such because it's competitive. But, but earlier you used to disclose, right, in terms of what, what was the, the breakup between the client addition cost and the fixed cost, right? Correct. And that's the decision we have taken, uh, that I have taken now, is that going forward we don't want to disclose that. Understood. And, 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 uh, and uh, what is uh, the number of active clients uh, we have as of in this first quarter? Out of the, I think, what, gross client of 3.6 million? Uh, so we have active client approximately in the range of 30 to 35 percent. Three zero, 30 to 35 percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Understood. And then, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what sort of client addition growth we are looking at? Uh, I mean, 
as we move forward? See, as of now, as you have seen, right? Right now, the industry itself is degrowing, and as we have seen that there is uh, our focus continues to be on acquiring high quality clients. Now we have built a lot of efficiencies in the system. So obviously, as we scale, we will be looking at you know at building a building the processes to a point where we can grow in double digits from here on out. Now this is all we can say at this point. But as you can see, we have operated with a very high level of efficiency, and over the past year, a lot of investment has gone in hardening our digital playbook, digital tools, digital frameworks. So we have believe we have hit a point where we can now start scaling those investments. Now we will be doing that responsibly, as I mentioned in the call. But you can assume, you know, anywhere in, uh, you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 percent is what we will initially start, and then kind of scale up from there. You know, 10 to 15 percent quarter in quarter, right? 10 to 15 percent over what we are doing today. Yeah. Yeah, that's quarter in quarter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, understood. Yep, yeah, uh, I think uh, that's it from my side, sir. Uh, all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from Chetan Shah from Systematics. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello, sir. I just one question. Hello. Is, uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, so I have just one question. The client acquisition has been coming down month on month, a quarter on quarter. Yeah. So yeah. the cost reduction is that anywhere relevant? Ki we are inc uh, incurring lesser cost in like client acquisition. I know you don't give the number now, but yeah, uh, is yeah. that understanding correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And by the way, the, I see we have been deliberately pursuing the strategy to acquire customers at the rate at which we think we can turn them profitable. So it's not oh. that there is any uh, that there is nothing preventing us from scaling that playbook because it's always easy to scale that. The question is, can we do it while holding our underlying business fundamentals, operating the business at a certain healthy uh, OPM level, and also keeping you know decent levels of uh, payback period? So that's the short answer to your question. Is yes, that's how we are looking at our long-term plan. Okay, got it. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Next question comes from Karthik Ayan from Suyash Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon. A uh, couple of clarifications. One is your other expenses are around 41 crore rupees. I'm assuming this is a combination of uh, lower customer acquisition cost. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so so, just wanted to understand how to try, how to think about this number going ahead. Yeah. Uh, so can so, you give them a so our expenses was approximately in the range of 45 to 46 crore. Uh, in the quarter right. four, uh, it reached to 49 crore because there were some exceptional items came in quarter four. Uh, and right. uh, in this quarter, 45 came to the 41 crore, which is majorly pertaining to uh, uh, the advertisement and branding cost. Mm -hmm. So right. overall, the reasoning, uh, uh, I mean, the reasoning of 9 crore reduction is the 50 to 60 percent is advertisement and IT, IT cost, and the rest 50 percent is office and admin expenses. Right, right. Um, okay. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Let me get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. <coughs> I repeat, dear participants, if you have any question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Next question comes from Karan Bansal from, from West Bridge. Please go ahead. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. If I just wanted to ask on the non working revenue part, so how has the trend been for non working revenue in the past year? Uh, so our uh, our cross sell is uh, contributing seven percent, and other income is contributing approximately eighteen to twenty percent. Uh, but all the other income is majorly pertaining to uh, broking because once the broking is down, that ancillary income related to the you know AMC DP is also went, went down. 
So uh, I can conclude on this that approximately 20% is other income and 80% is a, a broking and related income. And the mutual fund income that will be coming in that will be based on other income, like the uh, mutual fund income? that the mutual uh, fund AVM that uh, is there with five It is coming under a cross sell income. It's coming under cross sell income. Okay. Yes, yes, and yes. how much how much will the that comprise of the total cross sell income? Uh, so we don't share this number actually. Okay. Okay. Sure. And also, do you have any plans of going to offer physical presence also, like an omni-channel approach? Sorry, what's the... Uh, I didn't understand. What's the question? Do you have any plans for an omni-channel approach? So, uh, see, as a part of the long-term strategy, yes, that is one of the options that we are considering. But uh, it's hmm. not like a part of our full playbook as of this yet, because there are, as you know, there are many issues scaling that channel in a, uh, you know, uh, especially for digital businesses. So, yes, it's something that we are considering, but nothing that uh, we can talk about as of this point. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it for me, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from Rishikesh Osa from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So, my first question is with respect to the cost structure. So, like you, uh, can we say that you know the current cost structure will not go up? Like the current cost base that we have of around 65 crores, will that remain more or less constant now? See, I think that's the wrong way to look at it. Okay, we are a growth business. There is no point in continuing to uh, hold up cash if we are not going to fuel growth. We are in the business of long-term acquisition, long-term customer growth and building a story to bring customers on our platform. So uh, obviously our costs will scale. Now the important thing there is that our revenue will also scale and some of those will be seen within the first year, some of those will be seen in subsequent years. So the, our focus is now, now that we have built a good foundation on the business side, we have to continue doing some more investments on the technology side and then scale the business much faster than, uh, you know, than, uh, uh, than the rate at which the market is growing. That is really our benchmark because we believe we have the best product today that we can bring to the masses. So that's really how I look at it. Okay. Okay. And so with respect to the customer acquisition, uh, like, uh, did I like hear you correct that uh, you said 15% growth quarter on quarter? Yeah, I, I was just giving an indicative number. I'm just giving you an indicative idea is that generally when digital businesses start scaling up, they don't go 2x, 3x overnight. You know, so I'm giving you a general framework that generally speaking, if you look at most digital businesses, uh, you know, then every quarter on quarter, they plan a certain rate at which they want to grow. So we have picked this number. Obviously, it could be higher or lower depending on how our uh, tools and processes, uh, you know, uh, scale up. So we will kind of make that call depending on market conditions and our strategy also. But that's the indicative number just to, you know, give you a sense of how we are thinking. Okay. So... With respect to the revenue growth, should that match with the customer acquisition growth too? So that may not be necessarily true. In general, yes, it will. But uh, see, in this, as we scale the uh, as we scale the business side, see, we have been, as I told you, we have been running with a very high level of efficiency. In fact, we are running with the highest level of efficiency of almost any broker at this stage. You know, because our our turnaround CACs are hardly within three to four months. So clearly, there is a lot of legroom. Now, some of it may translate to new incentive schemes, new business schemes, which may which we may introduce, which may not give us uh, immediate quarter-on-quarter -quarter revenue, but they will optimize the customer for long-term value. That said, we are looking for a healthy split where there is a, where there is a good chunk of revenue which is uh, realized within the first year and subsequent ones which build on to our latent customer base. You know? Okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. We have a follow-up question from Karthik Ayan from Suyash Advisors. Please go ahead. A couple of follow-ups. Uh, I was distracted. Sorry. So first is, you know, it's very impressive that you've been able to shrink uh, uh, payback to just four months. You know, even significant considering a few months, a few quarters ago, we used to talk about eight, nine months and so on. Right. A, can you talk about how you are able to curate so well? You know, especially in a, a, a complex environment to, you know, from a broking business point of view. Can you have, you know, share some details on that? 
secondly yeah. could you yeah. share some rope on uh, the attrition that you are seeing both in terms of customer level activity as also customer base both of these some thoughts on both these will be very interesting absolutely so we have uh, prakash who is our chief business officer i'll let him comment on this prakash over to you yeah hi uh, the talking about your first uh, uh, question regarding uh, how we are able to uh, get the cac uh, uh, rather pay back into less than 4 months now uh, yes. if you see for last two quarters we have been uh, we have been saying that you know we are focusing on uh, acquiring quality of customers now uh, yes. when you are actually acquiring customers who are genuinely interested in trading then uh, automatically the revenue per customer that you get from them is is higher and and most of our acquisition today uh, happens either organically or through word of mouth or referrals so these are high quality mm -hmm. customers because mm -hmm. uh, they are coming organically or through a word of mouth uh, our paybacks uh, you know have significantly reduced almost by uh, half we were in the range of 8 to 10 months so i think it's a combination of uh, focusing on quality uh, getting more organic and uh, uh, high revenue generating customers especially on our derivative yep. platform So what what are they migrating from away from that used to say sorry uh, so, whom are they moving away from i mean what i'm trying to understand is why would they migrate towards pay paisa and what is pulling them to that is the question yeah. See, first of all it is difficult to actually uh, you know comment whether they are migrating because we get uh, even today almost uh, you know 60 65% of the customers that we are acquiring even now mm -hmm. are for mm -hmm. the balance okay. 35 40% people are existing to the market and they are coming but it is difficult uh, to actually say that whether uh, you know we are acquiring or other we are acquiring from competition or people are migrating from one competitor to another because if you look at right. the at exchange level the overall turnovers are going up so it may happen yes. that the same customers are increasing the volume at with multiple brokers as well sure i mean i yeah fair you know in fact you touched upon the point i was thinking about with these controllables from your side and and i was really asking in the same context how much of this is market volume driven and how much of this is you know quality yeah, and, you know, and, and, and also i should add and also just i should add one more important point uh, which prakar alluded to is see that uh, if you look at the existing players in the market right we have hands down one of the best fno platforms in the industry so ever since right. we have launched the fno 360 platform which is like a beacon for uh, most uh, you know for for most for, mo for most of the indian digital space because if you if the maturity of the platform is is absolutely it's uh, it's far more feature richer than even the next best competition so obviously yeah. as we have built that and we scale that we see that customers who who may have multiple accounts nothing stops them from having multiple accounts they come and try right. our platform and gradually the stickiness builds up so it's exactly what prakash said it's a combination of both strategy on the business side as well as investments on tech which is uh, right. which is uh, where we are at you know interesting very interesting and i hope you continue doing well best wishes thank you very much thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Ladies and gentlemen if you have any question please press star and one on your telephone keypad Next question comes from Nemin Doshi from Motilal Oswal please go ahead Hello am I audible Hello yes hello Yes, you are audible. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So my question was regarding the revenue growth. Sorry, I missed your earlier commentary with regards to it. So can you just repeat with respect to we have seen a growth in EBITDA, but the revenue haven't translated uh, during the quarter, being markets reaching all-time high. 
and uh, the broking revenue was down qoq by 7% so your thoughts on that on the same yeah so okay there's a couple of things right i mean as we as we build the business we are we are trying to get customers who can stay with us for the long haul so as customers come on to our platform we introduce schemes which let them run you know different types of uh, uh, revenue strategies and that lets them bundle their offerings in a way that incentivizes them to learn the platform and obviously continue to scale with the platform so there is never almost never a one to one correlation between adto and uh, and revenue you know but what we do see is that as the quarter has progressed more adto participation tells us that there are high quality customers who are coming and trading more on our platform now whether it is in uh, whether they do one order or 10 orders or you know uh, or how they slice or dice that is entirely up to the strategies they pick so that's the result that there is really no direct correlation between one number and another you know so when we look at a long term story however what we do see is that the customer participation that is reflected through adto continues to rise and obviously that also has direct implications on uh, you know on how we turn the customers active and how many of them end up being revenue generating for us okay got it so and secondly on 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 your margin trade funding book so that has also declined so any 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 reason for it yeah gaurav will answer that uh, so actually we have seen in past and as per the industry standard also so most of the uh, you know uh, the uh, the investor who uh, i mean get them mta facility close their position in the month of feb uh, or march because of the end of the financial year and then you know they restart the position in the month of may june and uh, i mean they build up from july to august so we are pretty sure that we will uh, regain the market share in that in future but most uh, i mean the main reason is due to financial year end okay got it got it. thank you thank you thank you we have a follow up question from rishikesh oja from robo capital please go ahead uh hi thank you for the follow up so i have just one more question uh in earlier few quarters back we were talking about you know steady state uh, pbt margins of 35 to 40% so just wanted to you know get a broad sense of uh, by when can we see some sort of margin yeah see the what was communicated earlier is basically where we want to be operationally as in that's a nice aspirational target to have we are committed to that eventual playbook you know we are we committed to we are committed to that eventual mix we obviously want to run the business at that much. now but as we said as the quarter on quarter as we have seen through the progression of this year there was a period where there was nobody in the market three quarters ago the trading was literally it was down but as people have started coming back to the market we have to continue investing more and obviously that is going to have an impact on how we uh, on our uh, you know on our overall margin number now overall what i see is that that is the north star for us we want to get to that number but our our true uh, the framework we want to keep operating for our car company at is we want to keep the overall pat between the 15 to you know 17% number that we are at today because that represents overall healthy business and that results in a pbt number of in the mid 30s as well so that's how we are looking at scaling the business from uh, from now on you know and at some point obviously uh, as we continue to hit critical mass we will build those efficiencies at scale which uh, which which will obviously drive up our margins even further you know okay oh, okay no problem thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen if you have any question please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad ladies and gentlemen if you have any question please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad
ladies and gentlemen if you have any question please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad We have a follow-up question from Neiman Doshi from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for yeah. the follow-up. Uh, yeah. I had one question regarding uh, regarding our market share. Our market share has remained in mid three for, uh, with respect to retail market share when we see. So how do you right. see this shaping up? And and with respect to customer acquisition also, this quarter we have seen the overall demats additions have been uh, have been. Pretty good, not 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 that bad as compared to 23. So, how right. do you see this customer acquisition shaping uh, uh, in the coming coming year, throughout the year? Yeah. So, I mean, over the coming quarters, we are going to be aggressively uh, investing both in scaling both the market participation as well as in uh, uh, scaling our acquisitions. And this is what you know we have discussed in the call, right? Now, obviously, we have to do it very responsibly. Responsibly, right? We want to strive to stay between the three to six month kind of payback period. And uh, right now, we feel we are rightly positioned to continue scaling. So you should you should ex you should expect that these acquisition numbers and eventually the ADTOs will correspondingly shape up according to that. Okay. Okay. So is it is it fair to say that company still is in investing mode and uh, the future benefits are yet to uh, show up. Yeah, yeah okay. that is hundred percent correct. Yes. Oh, okay, got it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. There are no further questions. Now I hand over the floor to the management for closing comments. Yeah. So thank you everyone for attending the call. If there are any Further questions, please direct them to ir at fivepesa.com, uh, uh, five and we look forward to meeting all of you again next quarter. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, sir. Ladies thank and you. gentlemen, thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes your conference for today. Thank you for your participation and for using Dur Sabha's conference call service. You may disconnect your lines now. Thank you and have a good day.